excellent. It's excellent. And I think one of the problems with, I shouldn't say a problem, but issues that I've seen with students in, that is using the journal, they never go back and review what they've journaled. At the end of every month, I go back and I, I just f flip through my journal through various probably eight or ten different days throughout the month and try to refresh my memory on what God has given me for that month. And here's what's amazing. <clears throat> I have read Proverbs. I don't know how many times I've read through Proverbs now in a number of years. But it, it's amazing to me when I go back and compare one journal to the other on particular days, the completely different things, the different verses that God will give me, and invariably, it's a, here's, here's, here's the amazing thing about God. It's invariably what I need for that day or what somebody that I'm going to talk to needs for that day. As a matter of fact, the other morning, uh, someone God laid someone on my heart. I texted them a verse. She immediately texted me back, said, Brother Tim, you have no idea. This is exactly what I needed for a student that I was talking to just last night. I'm going to give her this verse you just sent me. I had no idea who that lady was talking to or what the situation was there, but God did. It's amazing. So we're going to get into this uh, prayer section here. It's section number three there in your journal. And I think one of the most misunderstood parts of using this journal properly is the pause section of the journal. Okay? Communication is two ways. Okay? Now I'm up here teaching this class today. I'm communicating to you. Okay? It's really, well, kind of. It's kind of an open forum, but not as much. I'm doing most of the talking today. Okay? The, but you expected that. That is what you, you expected me to teach this class, okay? But if, if Jeff and I were just having, if it was just Jeff and I, do I need to stay over here for that camera, I guess, probably? Okay. I, I drive camera guys crazy when I preach because I, I, walk, I walk about 10 miles every time I preach. But if Jeff and I were having a conversation and I was doing all the talking, it really wouldn't be communicating. Jeff would just be listening. Okay? And I'm afraid too often, during our prayer time, we have this, what I call a grocery list of items that we want to tell God we want and we need. Nothing wrong with going to God with our request. Okay? God says in the book of Hebrews that we're supposed to come boldly before the throne. Okay? Well, if, I, if I'm not boldly going to him and asking for him, then how am I going to fulfill that scripture? Okay? But I like to say there's a line, a fine line between just asking God for things and communicating with God. Okay? So this, this is the part of the journal that I think is the most misused. Because we're too busy telling God what we need and we're not listening to God. Communication has to be two ways, okay? If I were to call you on the cell phone and you picked up your cell phone and I just started rambling and rambling and rambling and rambling and ra rambling, then we're really not communicating. You're just listening to me, okay? So the idea of the sections here in the journal for praise, for needs, for forgiveness and for protection, okay? Right behind each of those words in parentheses is the word pause. What I want to encourage you to do is that when you start your prayer time, you say, God, what do you want me to praise you for today? Amen. Okay? I have some things off the top of my head that I'm, I'm always going to be thankful for. I'm always going to be thankful for my, for my salvation. I'm always going to be thankful for the health that God has allowed me to have. <laughs> Especially after abusing my body for so many years. Amen. Hey! God has still given me the health to do what he's called me to do. It makes, to be honest with you, humanly speaking, it makes no sense. 
why I'm in the physical condition that I am because of the 25 years that I've used my body. But if I had to list a couple of things off the top of my head every day, I would thank you for my salvation and for my health. Not that I don't want to thank him for that, but I want to praise him today for what he wants me to praise him for. Amen. And if you'll just ask him, God, what do you want me to praise you for today? And then you shut your mouth. And you open your ears. Now God's not going to talk to you audibly, okay? It's just a form of allowing God to speak to you. And you know what I'm talking about. It's not some spooky, eerie thing, okay? But God's going to impress on you what he wants you to praise him for today. I did a lot of traveling last, you know, the last month. So this morning, when I asked God what he wanted me to praise him for, that was the very first thing. It wasn't my salvation, and not that I'm ungrateful today for my salvation. Not that I don't want to praise God. But God reminded me, Tim, you've traveled thousands of miles and not even the first close call. I drive a 1999 Toyota Avalon with with 200,000 miles on it. I'm grateful for that car. I get 27 and a half miles to gallon. It's incredible. I traded it for, I had a great big huge truck and I knew that wasn't going to be very feasible, okay? But I'm saying, God impressed on me this morning to thank him for the number of miles that I've driven safely. And so I have that in my journal. He also impressed on me this morning to thank him for the time that I got to spend. there's no reason humanly speaking that God should give me the opportunity to restore that relationship that he has. And so I praised him for that today. He also impressed on me to praise him for the relationship that he's allowed me to build these last few months with Pastor Slaybaugh. You say, you put that in your journal? Yep, sure did. Why? Because that's what God impressed on me this morning to praise him for. Now I have a whole number of things that I could praise him for. But those are the ones in particular that God laid on my heart this morning. And we need to do that with each and every one of those sections. For the needs, same way. Boy, we we could just give God a whole list of needs, couldn't we? If your if your needs are anything like mine, we could fill up a whole book with the things that we need. Or at least we think we do, amen. But we need to stop and take time and ask God, God, what needs do I have today that you want me to pray about? But not necessarily just my needs. Lord, what are some needs in general that you want me to pray about? And you're going to be surprised at how often those needs are nothing that you would think of because they're not your needs. They're other people's needs. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. But it's all about this two-way communication. Okay? I think one of the problems that we have, I say we generally as as Christians, as far as this thing of of prayer time, is we're not organized. I don't know about you, but if I, I am very easily, I don't have ADD, but if there was such a thing as an adult ADD, I might. I I have a hard time staying focused on something. I'm going to be real honest. I'm kind of scatterbrained at times. Okay? And if I'm not organized in my prayer time, 
there are going to be people that have asked me to pray for them, and I'm not going to remember them. Okay? So here is what I have done. And there again, this works for me. It may not work for you. I have a five and a half by eight and a half binder. And I have categories in here. This is not Tim Farley's system, okay? And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you who I got it from. I got this from Dr. Dennis Coral back probably in 2000. I was at a Revival Fires conference, and he had this prayer journal on his table, and I bought it. Well, I have worn out his binder already, and I went and bought my own binder, okay? But these are still his category cards, okay? I am not presenting this to, I don't want God to think that I'm presenting this to him because this is my, this is my grocery list. Because probably 99% of what's in this journal has nothing to do with Tim Farley. It's other people. Okay? The very first section here is called Thanksgiving. And I have a whole list of things that I am thankful for. Now, I'm not, this is, this is separate than this section in the journal as far as the praise and the pause, okay? This is in addition to, to this, okay? This is part of what I've incorporated every morning in my personal prayer time. And I do my prayer time before I do anything else in my journal. So the, the third section of my journal is the area that I fill out in my journal first. I have my prayer time and then I do my Bible reading. I've just, if I just sit down and start reading, I'm not focused on the Lord. But after I get done praying, I'm focused on the Lord. Amen. And then I can get more out of my Bible reading. There again, this is what I do, not necessarily what you do, okay? But I have a whole list of things here that I'm thankful for. And every single morning, I want to make sure that I tell God, God knows that I'm thankful for these things. Amen. Okay? Then there is a section in, in this that is called worship. It says, when I worship the Lord, I'm thanking God for what he is. First Chronicles 16, 29, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And there are two pages that have lots of terms of who God is. And every morning, I go through a section, and I praise God for who he is. Okay? For an example, I praise him for being the captain of salvation, for being the chief shepherd, for being the Christ of God, for being the comforter, for being the consolation of Israel, for being the chief cornerstone. For being the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer. The list goes on and on and on. So why do you do that, Tim? Because I want to worship him. I want to give God the glory that's due to him. Then I have family needs. I have all of my, my brothers, sisters, my in-laws, my nieces, my nephews, my grandkids, my children all on here. I pray for them every single day. If there is a particular need they have, I write that down so I don't forget that. Okay? I have something that's called ministry needs. And I have a list of ministry needs. For an example, now I'm involved in the Are You Beyond ministry. So those lists of needs are different than when I was an assistant pastor at Memorial Baptist Church. And so I have those things listed. I have, for an example here, and on my personal list, uh, I have monthly travel support. I have uh, continued to set up meetings, continue to set up conferences. When I go back to the Philippines, I've got to find a permanent place to live. Those are all needs that I have that are ministry related. Okay? They're not personal needs. They're ministry needs. Okay? I have a list of about 52 friends that I pray for on a very regular basis. Going back to the section in the journal that says persons that I'll encourage, 
Oftentimes, when I'm praying for a particular person, God will lay it on my heart. There have been times you can ask Chris Davis. He'll get a text early in the morning. Good morning. Praying for you. Have a great day. Simple, short and sweet. Why did I do that? Because God laid him on my heart that day. Brother Matt, I think I've done that to you maybe even a time or two. Okay? You'd be surprised at the number of people that respond back and say, wow, thanks. I needed to hear that this morning. I had no idea Chris was going to need that this morning or Matt was going to need that this morning. But God did. And God laid him on my heart. And had I not been organized, and had I not prayed for Chris, I wouldn't have known that Chris needed that encouragement that morning. I'm not telling you this because I have something special with God. Oh, wait a minute. I am telling you because I do have something special for God. But you can have the same thing. But I want to encourage you to get organized. I don't have the... um, I don't even know what the word I want to use. I don't have the only accessibility to God because of who Tim Farley is. Because Tim Farley is nobody but a sinner saved by grace. Amen? Amen? Just like you are. And you can have the same relationship with God. Amen. Church family. As the assistant pastor of Memorial Baptist Church, I have about 120 people's name listed in my journal. Okay? And I'm going to be honest with you, since I've resigned my position in January, I don't pray for these people nearly as often as I did when I was an assistant pastor. I still go through and pray for them periodically, but not every morning. I used to pray for these people by name every single morning. Why? Because I was organized. They had particular needs. I have a list of, I think there's about 62 preachers across the country here that I pray for every single morning. And there again, if I know a particular need that they have, I have it written down and I pray for that particular need. And oftentimes, God will lay a pastor on my heart and I'll send him a text just like I do for Chris and Matt. He said, well, why do you go through that trouble? Because if God lays somebody particular on my heart, there's a reason. Amen. And you'd be surprised at how many preachers and pastors across the country, we need words of encouragement too, you know? Amen. We do, and they do. And so I want to I follow God's intuitive leading. It's why? Because it's two-way communication. It's not me just throwing a bunch of names at God. It's being in a mode, if you will, in a in a frame of mind to be ready to listen to God. It's not all about what Tim's got to say here. It's two way communication. And there again, I feel like if God lays somebody on my heart. I need not ignore that. That'd be like turning my back on a conviction. I don't want to do that. I want to keep things right with God. So when God lays a person on my heart, I want to be an encouragement to them. And Then I have a list of all of the missionaries that Memorial Baptist uh, Church supports, and I have them broken down in the seven days of the week, and I, I pray for a section of missionaries every single day. I would encourage you, if you have a list of missionaries, Uh, Ours is printed out at Memorial. Ours is printed out on our Wednesday night prayer sheet every week. And I I would encourage you to get a list of your missionaries and pray for them and text or write them letters or email them and encourage them often. And And I have found this out the number of times that I've been in the Philippines now. It's a little more difficult when you're away from everybody back here. But I tell you something that's really neat that I never, ever thought I would say was really neat is Facebook. Because I'm telling you, it, it can be used for the wrong thing, okay? And I, I always said Facebook was no good, okay? But I use it to stay in communication with many, many people. I follow Brother Matt and everything that's going on down at Mount Olive Baptist Church through Facebook. And when I'm in the Philippines, I feel like I'm still right here. And I've had people comment that about me that when they follow me and I'm in the Philippines. It feels like we're just right here. Why? Because we're able to communicate back and forth. That's two-way communication. 
And so fo follow your missionaries. Send them emails. I have a whole section in here for uh, praying for America. I pray for President Trump, Vice President uh, Pence every single day. I have a list of our cabinets. I have a list of all the, uh, the uh, people who hold uh, government positions in the state of Florida. Um, I, I pray for them every day. So why do you do that? Well, I believe, I believe we're required to. Okay? I believe it's a responsibility. And I'm afraid that it's a responsibility that we often don't take very seriously. And I'm going to be the first to tell you, we have some really crooked politicians. Hey! But, you, but you know what? That doesn't negate my responsibility to pray for them. Okay? I prayed for President Obama. I was against almost, hey! I was against almost everything he did as the president. Hey! But it was my responsibility to pray for him every single day. Okay? How am I, I, I'm not, yep. I, and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't remember most of the cabinet's names. If I don't have it written down and organized, I'm not going to pray for them like I'm supposed to. And then lastly, in my journal, I have a section for my personal needs. And that's the very last thing that I pray for. We've got to be organized. I guess even maybe even more than being organized is to realize how important our responsibility is to pray for other people. Amen. I count it a privilege when people give me something and ask me to pray about it. Amen. You know you know why I count that a privilege? Because they know that I have some communication with him. I have nothing, I have nothing special. I, I do have something special, but I am nobody special. Without God, I am absolutely nothing. But I have, through this process of my Christian life, these last almost 19 years now, to the very best of my knowledge and the best of my ability, I am doing everything I can to keep this relationship really, really sweet. Amen. And I'm going to be honest with you. If I never, ever have anything else in my life, if I have this, I'm okay with that. Amen. Having friends with people like you, that's icing on the cake. Having relationships with pastors all over this country and now all over the Philippines. That's cream cheese icing on top of the muffin. Amen? Amen. But I'm serious. This is the most important thing Amen. that I want to concentrate on every single day. And this is how I do it. This is how I've done it since November of 2002. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Because I know Tim Farber. That's right. I know where God has brought me from. Uh -oh. Oh. I have no idea where he's taking me. I'm just along for the That's ride. Right. And I'm loving every minute of it. But it's all about building this personal relationship with I love God more than any fiber of my being. Amen. He has done so much in my life. I have so, yes. much, so much to be thankful and grateful for. I'm thankful that Steve Currington has given us these tools to Amen. use to continue building our relationship with God. Amen. I want to encourage you. Use your journal. Take it serious. Take it serious. Don't just flippantly do it. Amen. The years that I've been an RU director, and especially here the last almost five years that I was RU director at Memorial Baptist Church, every time I talked about the journal, 
I told my students and my leaders, well, I know my leaders are using it, but I told my students, if you'll buy a journal, and your journal for the 90 days that's in a $15 journal, and if you can come back to me at the end of those 90 days and honestly tell me that your personal prayer time and personal devo time is not better than it was when you started, I'll give you your $15 back. I am that sold on the It's Personal Daily Journal if you apply it. If you'll use it the way it's designed, I promise you, God will change your life. And how can I say that? Because I know he's done it for me. And if he's done it for this old drunk, he'll do it for you, I promise you. I promise you. Amen. I'll, I'll offer you a whole bunch. But, it's, it's, a, but it's, it's God doing the changing. It's not us. It's not work. God's doing all the work. It's a tool that we've been given to use, and I want to encourage you to use it. Any questions over the prayer section? Anything I can help you with? I want to help you. If I can. Yes, sir, Brother Mike. I'm glad you said that. I, I want to share a couple of things. Because I do that. I have, I have answered, an, answers to prayers listed here. Okay? For an example, I was just kind of reviewing this the other day. I'd been praying for a probation officer in Ohio when I was the RU director in Delaware. I prayed for a particular probation officer for five years. I reported to him every Monday of the students that he had assigned to my program. For five years, I prayed for him. He finally had the privilege of leading him to the Lord. Amen. And that's one, of the dates hey. that, that's one of the dates that I wrote in my journal. And just the other day, I was going back through and reviewing. It's like, oh, wow. Well, yeah, I remember that. And memories just started flooding my mind about all the conversations that I'd had with Ed White. Here's, here's a funny story. Well, it's not funny. But Ed White was a Ohio State Patrolman. Yeah. And he was the Ohio State Patrolman that pulled me over many, 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 many years ago for my first drunk driving offense. Him, he retired from the Highway Patrol and took a job as a probation officer. And he's the probation officer that God allowed me to lead to the Lord yeah. some 30 years later. Amen. Had sweet, sweet, just, oh, it was just so sweet. Yeah. But yeah. Write down the dates that God answers that because there's nothing more encouraging than getting answers to prayers because here's what it's done for me anyway. It's encouraging me more to continue to pray for long periods of time for things and for people when you see God finally answer that. It increases your faith. At least it does for this old boy anyway. Amen. That's a good thought. I forgot. I meant to say that and I forgot. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. But yeah, as, as you track through your journal, as, as especially when you, when you have your prayer journal together and you organize, make sure that you're writing down every time that God answers those requests. That'll just be an encouragement to you to continue to keep on 